Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome back to another episode of Mornings with the Montagues. We are happy to have you here today joining us in our home where we open up our hearts, open up our house, and we are going to do this devotional today. Today's devotional is Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And the verse today, Exodus 20, 14, do not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. And so if you guys understand where we are in this part of the text, we are in Exodus 20 where God is giving Moses the Ten Commandments. And one of those we're focusing on today is not committing adultery. And so our devotional is titled, Why Faithfulness Matters. And I will read this today. Adultery. No couple wants to talk about it, yet According to Beth Allen at the University of Denver, adultery is rampant. Many people who report being happy in marriages commit adultery, she says in The Roots of Temptation, a book that was released. Those who assume that only bad people in marriages cheat can blind themselves at their own risk. They're unprepared for the risky times in their own lives. So again, this is a heavy topic. Enter with caution because this is, I think, one of the biggest reasons why people... I mean, divorce, right? Money and adultery. I think those are high, high statistics. Yeah, and the the and it's also a reason why Jesus allow the divorce, right? Mm, that is one reason why. Not his his will ever to have a divorce, right? But adultery, if you want to be separated. Adultery matters so much to God that the penalty for infidelity in the Old Testament was death. Why? Faithfulness is the heart of covenant relationships. That's so important, right? Faithfulness is the heart of covenant relationships. When God made a covenant with his people, first Israel and later the church, faithfulness was the glue that held it together. A covenant depends on the promises made by both parties. Marriage mirrors God's covenantal relationship with his people. Throughout the Bible, God speaks of his covenant with his people in marriage terms. For example, in Ephesians 5, 31-32, Paul explained that the intimacy of marriage is really a picture of Christ's relationship with the bride, his church. I love this. We always like to touch on this topic that we are the bride of Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. We are preparing for the bridegroom to return. Maranatha, Jesus is coming back. And come Lord Jesus, Maranatha. And we are the bride. And we always like to remember this in our home and in our walk with the Lord that Jesus is coming back for his bride, and I don't think that he's going to want a bride that is entertaining the world and who is loving the the lusts of the world. He wants a pure bride, right? Because Jesus is the definition of pure, right? He is the example of purity, and he wants his bride to be equally yoked with him, right? So when we are consuming all of these things that are ungodly or unrighteous, we need to rid ourselves of these things and follow Christ and be you know, redeems from those things, those addictions, those those sins that are holding us down because Jesus is coming back for his bride and we are the bride of Christ. Marriage bonds the spirits of two people. There is a soul deep intimacy. When a husband or wife enters into a romantic sexual relationship with someone else, the marriage is pulled apart at the seams. The bond between the couple disintegrates. Those who are one flesh are torn apart. Beyond the terrible destruction to the marriage caused by adultery, there is damage done to the victimized spouse, who can no longer trust in the marriage or have any faith in the adulterer. The intense sense of rejection and violation of failure and loss is like a death in many ways. The victim must grieve the loss and work through the feelings of pain, anger, and sorrow. God forbids adultery because he loves us, and adultery is like swallowing a grenade that will blow up in our house to pieces. Faithfulness, on the other hand, cultivates love and trust deep within our hearts. Fidelity is hard sometimes, but it is at least these very points of stress that love matures and deepens and becomes more like God's love for us. Faithfulness, especially when it is difficult, shapes us into the image of Christ. When loving is difficult, we can turn to God, asking for grace to forgive what we cannot forgive on our own, wisdom to know how to love, and perseverance when there is little improvement in our relationship. In times when love is broken by adultery, God can build faithful love back into our lives. When we love despite the hurt, we reflect our maker. So faithfulness, it's so important to covenant. Our relationship in marriage, 
our covenant to God, faithfulness, obedience. Anything to comment about this so far today? No. And all I can think of is as a bride of Christ. Of course, in marriage, to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be faithful. Because first, you have to be faithful to the Lord yeah. and also to our spouse. But the, I just think about the, the bride and how Israel was also consider, considered adulterous mm -hmm. to God in the past. And God was so merciful and restored her and rescued mm -hmm. her. And he does that with us. Like, he forbids adultery because it's horrible. He knows it hurts. He knows it hurts her heart and it hurts his heart. Yeah. So it hurts his heart and the bride, it's not faithful. So, yeah, once we weren't faithful, once we weren't believers, we, once we weren't tr trusting him and mm -hmm. walking with him and being his spouse, but... Now we have to walk in faithfulness. Yeah. And I want to touch on this point about faithfulness and purity. Purity is not just abstaining from sexual relationships. Purity in this, this adultery is in your heart yeah, as well. It starts in if your you heart. If you are looking at someone lustfully, you are committing adultery in your heart. You know, this is what the Bible says. The Bible and so says. it's not just because you're not touching a coworker that you're sinning against God or against your spouse. It's literally in your mind as well. And we need to rebuke these thoughts. And I think that is such a valuable thing to remember because our world is consumed with sexual things, TV, music, billboards, all these things that are around. Yeah. And we got to protect our hearts. We got to guard ourselves from that. And nowadays, uh, there's even crazier stuff. Like you, you date many people at mm -hmm. the same, like you have a boyfriend or even you have a girlfriend. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's all this, Gender, gender confusing. I've been seeing things a lot about. Yeah, maybe the YouTube is gonna too. block me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but I've been seeing a lot. It's of so evil. Too. It's so evil. It's crazy. Like a lot of Christian um, YouTubers are talking about this topic right now. How <laughs> so? Like the world. I'm so far from that because I mean I'm literally living in ministry, so I'm not. I don't understand all the things that the yeah, world is doing. Yeah, but we work with people. Changing. I know, but like things that, are changing so rapidly. Yeah. In a horrible way, you know, of like the standards of what teenagers are understanding. What is the standard? This is what I'm supposed to do. I feel like it's different than whenever we were teenagers and this yeah, is the standard, yeah. you know. Now it's you're not cool unless you have yeah. 50 people that you have, you know, done these things with. That's crazy. It's crazy stuff. So faithfulness, we must not commit adultery in our hearts or physically with other people and also with God. I mean, that's the most, I mean, it's much bigger than, than infidelity with our spouses. It's so much bigger than that because we are the bride of Christ. And when we are sinning, when we're not being pure, we're sinning against God, the bridegroom, and we are the bride. And so I think we need to, to be cautious of that just because we're not physically doing things, but it's even in our hearts. Yeah. And our hearts need to be pure for yeah. God, right? And also, if you've been hurt before by yeah. a spouse, uh, that's not the will of God. You know, that's, that was never the will of God. From the beginning, he hated this mm -hmm. uh, unfaithfulness idea. Mm -hmm. So God himself wants to take care of our hearts, you know, and he's going to take care of our hearts when... Someone commits adultery against mm -hmm. us, and uh, also if you if you've done that, <laughs> walk into into repentance, and don't look back. Mm -hmm. Right, walk into repentance with Christ. He'll help you. Yeah. So our questions today these are heavy questions. So be prepared. Have we been unfaithful to each other in thoughts, words, or deeds, and how did that affect our relationship? So for us, as we talked about on other devotionals, that we brought some things into our marriage that needed healed in our thoughts and our words and in our deeds. And yeah, I think from before getting from before getting married, getting married, like dating someone else, mm -hmm. like. And I think it's so important to bring these. Ah, things there was to a God word I that I wanted to say the other time. It's defrauding, defrauding, defrauding. Wow. someone. Like when you're rubbing someone else's hand, mm -hmm. you know, 
like that you're not gonna you're not even dating mm -hmm. or even dating like i think dating is I hated dating. Yeah. I hated dating. I think we can both say. I think we can both say that. I wanted to jump into marriage. If we knew that we were going to be married, <laughs> you and I, you know, yeah. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, yeah. we would have done a lot of things differently. Yeah. Right. I absolutely would have done a lot of things. Like differently. I would uh, strongly suggest no kissing mm -hmm. before don't marriage. Don't even look at other people. <laughs> just don't even look. Pray. Mary, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but just yeah, you can date, but tr no kissing, you know, not necessary, because you don't know if you're gonna really get married with that person, and um, just like I repent from like even kissing other person before my husband. Mm -hmm. So imagine and other when you're things. Not married like, and you're hearing that you're like, she's sixteenth century person, you know, but when you get married. And you realize all of those decisions that we made before were out of fear. Yeah. We're out of doubt. Uh, for me, anyways, why was I dating someone at 16? Because I was doubting God. So early, you know? so early. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. But we make those decisions as a teenager to feel, to feel worth, have worth, to feel identity, to yeah. whatever else is going on as your hormones as a teenager. Yeah. But I regret all of those things. And me too. If I would have and known this, Marcelli was my wife when I was 15 years old, understanding that, I definitely would have made different choices moving yes. forward. The point is, God is a jealous God, mm. and He wants all of your heart completely to him, to be His. Like when you were a bride, and you are like, oh, I'm going to get married, I'm so happy, and it's that type of heart towards God. Yeah. So don't put someone else in there in with... A, a person that you're dating, I think we should be very, very respectful because that person is untouchable. Like that person mm -hmm. is for the future. That person is for getting married and the Lord will bless all the relationship, you know, but be respectful at that time, you know, that you're dating. I would not suggest to kiss, you know, and be alone You know, mm -hmm. it'd be better uh, to be always with friends, with people, use this time to know each other and talk. It was very good for Dallas and I. There was been a long time, very far, <laughs> mm -hmm. just getting to know each other. Yeah. We, I was in Asia and she was in Brazil. Yeah. And, and we spent just getting to know each just other. a few months, I guess, uh, dating mm -hmm. in person. We started dating in distance. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Sao Paulo. We didn't spend much time dating and then soon we engaged. So we kissed, you know, we had mistakes, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I wish we, we, we didn't. And because you were my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't even kiss okay. when we were dating. No, 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 no. I don't want to confuse people about that because it was okay because she's my wife. I'm not no. going to say that because then you can fall into other, other lies about yeah. that, right? Yeah, the point is I'm saying, like, be totally faithful to the Lord. Yeah. And I repent not, not uh, giving totally my heart 100% to the Lord, but mm -hmm. thinking, like, who is going to be my husband? Mm -hmm. Like, not having someone in my heart, but thinking that, you know, instead of just being for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I had to come in repentance and confess that to the Lord and give my heart all to Him, yeah. you know. Question number two, is it necessary for us to talk about infidelity? Why or why not? Yeah, I think it's important. I think why why is it a topic that's off limits? I think we should definitely, as we said in another devotional, similar to this topic, to build barriers around our marriage, to prepare ourselves for these situations. You know, set the standard for your for your marriage. Not just, oh, you can't commit adultery. Like for us, we said about me going to the gym. That's a barrier we've created in our family, in our life. Yeah. You know, no, no, talk lust, about these things. To not lust with your eyes. Yeah. Talk about these or things me. with your spouse. Why, uh, the third question here, why is it especially important for Christians to be faithful in marriage? I think you, you touched on that, that we are the bride of Christ and our heart We are also the example to the world mm -hmm. because the world crashes on us when uh, some believer uh, commits adultery, mm -hmm. adultery, right? So to be testimony, 
We yeah. are the bride of Christ. We've talked about this before. What is marriage? Marriage is a representation of God's love for us, for the church, right? So we have to represent that mm-hmm. well to the world in our marriage of our covenant relationship mm-hmm. of faithfulness, you know, not committing adultery in thoughts, words, or deeds. Yeah, like it, I would say like for uh, someone before dating or dating, do not defraud other person. Mm-hmm. And for after dating, uh, after like getting married, be faithful mm-hmm. to that person, to that spouse that you have now. That's it. So that's our devotional today. I think we can take away some good points that we must not commit adultery in our thoughts, in our words, or in our deeds. And we're not just committing adultery in these areas or sinning against our spouse. We're sinning against God. And I want to end with this point of Isaiah Salvador. If you guys have ever heard of him, he's a YouTube guy. He has a lot of great videos, but do you know what I'm going to say? About this? No. No. He has a video where he was talking about purity in his videos, and he was talking with his wife about this topic. And his wife is like, You would tell me if you were doing something that was impure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. And he's like, Oh, honey, I'm more afraid of God than you. I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm more afraid of God. And so I yeah. think that's a great of heart even, to have. Uh, not just telling, but uh-huh. I would of not doing, do it. Doing because yeah. he's more afraid of God than of yeah. his wife. So I think that's I would say a great me too. Point. <laughs> me too. That's a great point. You're not just sinning against your spouse. You're sinning against God. And so let's keep that in our heart this week as we we move forward. Um, Be careful of what you're consuming, the music, the lifestyle, the things around, the culture. Mm -hmm. Let's let's rid ourselves from these things and please God with our actions, with our thoughts, with our minds. And so that's our devotional today. I'll pray. All right. Lord, thank you so much for this devotional, for all the things that we're learning through every single day, opening up the word here. And I pray that our audience today, that they can pay attention to these words, Lord, that it's not just committing adultery physically, but it's in our minds, it's in our hearts, Lord, it's in our desires, it's in our wills, our passions, Lord. And I pray that our passions are pure, that our passions are set aside only for you, Lord, that you can purify our minds, purify our hearts, give us clean hands, Lord, and that we will not love the world. We will not love what the world has. We will not be attracted to what the world offers, Lord, but we will be attracted only to you. We will be romantic for you, Lord. We will be hungry for you, Lord, that we will want to spend time in the Word, praying with you every single day, leading our families and devotionals, and that we will be good examples to the world of your your relationship, your covenant to us, Lord. So I just ask for, for all of us to go into a call of purity, that we can walk forward and please you, Lord. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.